Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this video, I want to show you how you can edit a panorama in Lightroom CC 2019 like a pro. In this video, I want to show you how to edit a panorama like a pro. This is a panorama that I shot in Zion National Park, one of my favorite national parks in the USA. And the best way, of course, to shoot the photo is to be into portrait mode, and I've taken I want to say uh, th six different photos. Now, I did not HDR the photos and I probably should have. So what I did is I on purpose underexposed them because I was shooting right toward the sun. So what I'm going to do in Nitrum CC is I'm going to select all of these photos by holding on the shift key and with my right arrow, I'm going to select all of that. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to photo merge, panorama merge. When you come to that, you get a preview of your panorama and you get different kind of projections. Now projections, to make it simple, is just different ways of stitching the photos together. Um, basically, if you shoot two, if you are two wide angle, which I was, I think I was at 24 on every photo, you won't be able to use perspective. You're going to get an error saying unable to merge uh, because to use perspective, I advise you to be at 35 millimeter and, and above. Uh, I, I find that's kind of a sweet spot. 50 meter would be perfect. This is wide angle shots, but it works great in spherical and cylindrical. And if you look at it, basically with cylindrical, you get a little more, uh, you know, sky than spherical. But I really wanted to go for the panel look. Now, the other options that you have, one is boundary wrap, which you can basically stitch a different pixel, stretch everything to... Uh, get rid of all the you know missing information there. I shot this, I think I think I was on a tripod on this one. Or you can go auto crop, which is what I'm gonna do because I know the panel I'm looking for and I don't really need this pixel. We have the moon here, which is kind of cool. I want to keep it. And so I can click on merge. Now I've already done it and it's here. Also guys, don't forget to smash the like button. It helps other people find out about this video and these techniques and leave me a comment. Tell me what you want to learn. I read every single comment. Okay, so I lost my crop, that's fine. So let's crop the photo first. I really wanna go for a panoramic look and I advise you to crop first because when we do all the local, local adjustment, I may be a little bit more river like this. I really wanna, I don't wanna, the moon is there. I wanna keep it there. And voila, very underexposed photo, but I did that on purpose and I think I'm going to crop it even more. I did that on purpose because I wanted to get all the information into uh, the highlights and the shadows. So when you are faced with a lot of dynamic range highlight and shadows and you don't want to HDR, underexpose a little bit of your photo because check this out. If I open up the shadows, I'm going to get a lot of information back. And believe me, if you have a, I mean, this is a Sony Sonar 2, I believe, and it's not noisy. If you shoot Nikon, Sony, Olympus, or Fuji, you won't have the trouble. If you shoot with Canon, you might have the, a little bit of an issue and get some noise, but even that, we can get rid of it. Okay, now when it comes to the highlights, on this one, I don't wanna bring the highlights all the way down. Why? Because it gives a sort of contrast into this high clouds that I don't like, uh, and it, it just doesn't look natural. So I'm gonna go for now about halfway there. The great thing about Lightroom CC and Lightroom Classic is that it's completely non-destructive, so I can change my mind as much that I want. Okay, I'm gonna add a bit of contrast, and now I'm starting to get a feel for the photo, but we have still ways to go. So uh, starting with, um, once I nail the exposure of a pano, I mess around a little bit. I think on this one, I wanna add some yellow, but here's the problem, you see, I loved having a sky going from blue to yellow or blue to orange. If I go on the right here, I and more and more and getting it this really warm look, which is kind of cool, but not all the blues becomes very uh, grayish, you know. So how to do this? Well, trick is not to go so much on the on, on the yellow, just a little bit, maybe add a tad of magenta. Uh, I used to go crazy on magenta like this. I kind of, you know, stopped. I don't know, I'm just evolving as a photographer. Usually at this point, what I do is add a little bit of vibrance to make it pop and then a little bit of saturation. And I'm I'm thinking, okay, let's get into the magic. Let's get into what we call the local tools. So the local tools are located here in Lightroom CC. I'm gonna start with the graded filter. I'm gonna double click on anything that uh, I don't need. I think on this one, I just wanna lower the exposure and add a little bit of blue. 
click and drag watch for it click and drag and now I'm making now I'm getting back because I added a bit of blue I'm getting back that blue that I kind of lost in my overall white balance it's kind of doing like a local white balance and I remember you know I remind you that this greater filter the way they work is between this and the first line the power of the exposure is being applied at full strength and then it goes on a little gradient to the last drop so you can make a short or long short or long now Lightroom Classic has an amazing option with uh, with uh, masking, which uh, Lightroom CC doesn't have yet, where you can basically, you know, prevent the gradient to darken too much the mountain by doing a little mask. But that's okay. We'll deal with that. I think I want to make another gradient here because when it comes to a pano, I really want people to be drawn to the middle of the pano, and uh, middle of the pano is here. I still think that that the clouds don't look very natural, so. I want to I want to make them yeah they are too they are too definite you know it's nailing a, a sunset is quite something and that's really what I want to cover here so I'm going to take a radial gradient and I'm going to make a big radial gradient over the whole sunset area and over the rocks here the red rocks of Zion National Parks in the winter and um, I think I'm just going to add a tad of exposure a tad of yellow and magenta and maybe a little bit of saturation so I'm doing four different sliders on one circle four different sliders on one circle I know it's crazy I'm just listening to it is crazy okay cool maybe a little more saturation uh, but we'll deal more with saturation later on it now it starts to kind of shape how I want I think the photo lacks of contrast so I'm gonna add more contrast and now uh, the final touch the amazing I take a little brush and then I'm just gonna go Double click here. I don't want the temperature be I want it to be at zero. Thing I just want a little bit of exposure, no saturation, maybe a little bit of clarity. And then with the middle mouse, I just can make this brush big or small. And I think I'm gonna brush here. And I just want to bring back some of the details from the shadows here, maybe some of the river here. And usually when you have something, so I'm at 0 0.8. It's kind of a dangerous. Now, here is my biggest advice is try to not go over 0 0.5 and you're better off layering Lightroom brushes over Lightroom brushes than just going all in on, on the brush like this because that doesn't look natural but if you go at 0 0.5 and then you make another brush by clicking plus here and then let's make another brush this time I want it to be on the bushes here just make a little bit of highlights there Okay, maybe just a tad more on the bushes. Okay, make another brush. And then this one I'm just gonna use for the top here. And you go layer by layer. Maybe on this one I add a little bit of magenta and a little bit of saturation to make the rocks pop even more. You know, maybe a little bit of brush here. And small by little, we can really get something. Now, I still think the sky doesn't look quite right. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna go to the effect section here. And I'm going to add a tad of texture, but I'm going to go minus clarity, okay? And uh, the clouds still look a little too contrasty to me, so I'm going to go back to the circle. And that's what's amazing about Lightroom is you can go just back and forth. So that circle, I'm like, ooh, you know what? I'm just going to add some serious minus clarity. Yes. And it's, it's kind of subtle, but what I want is happiness. Now, what I want is a little bit, let's see here, clarity. Okay, is this happening or is this not happening? Oh yeah, it is happening. It's just a little laggy. Not so much, not so much. Just a little bit of clarity. I don't want this high clouds to be so definite, so contrasty. That's what that's what you see a lot in a GR photo, and I and I think it's a mistake because it screams retouching. I want to add more vibrance to it. I want to add more saturation, but I'm not done. Then you come to the color mixer here, and the way the color mixer works in Lightroom CC. It's, it's kind of the same philosophy in classic, but the tools are different. I actually love the tools here. So, for example, I can take the red, and you can just move the U. The U is going to be the actual quality, the actual type of red. By going right, look at the rocks up there. They become kind of orange or yellow. If I, be, I go left, they become really like red rocks. I kind of like that. I want the red rocks. And to push it even further, I'm going to add some saturation. Bam. And then I'm going to take the orange. And then same thing, let's see if I go left, the orange ooh, becomes very magenta and here very yellow. I think I want a little tad of that, 
not too much. I mean, the red rocks in Zion are like, woo, they're on fire. Okay, and then the yellow, let's see, if I go right, I add a lot of green and yellow, which I don't like, and there I add a lot of orange, just a little tad, and maybe a bit of saturation. So that's one way of doing it. The other ones, you can click here and uh, click, and you see, you can drag the red rocks and make them like sort of uh, greenish or left and sort of very magenta. So you can see in real time, but I'm not gonna do it because I've already done it. Okay, so let's me look at it in full screen mode. I'm thinking I want to make a little more uh, brush and a little more contrast. I I'm almost there. So what I'm going to do is maybe just go back for the brush. And I think I want to add one more exposure brush, a little stronger. I just want to make the bush here. Yeah, just make this a little more shiny and, and make the water a little more shiny. Oh, my computer is lagging. And I think I'm about done. So now, one thing that's important, let's talk about details. So when it comes to Lightroom CC and Panorama, you don't have the masking option that you have in, in Lightroom Classic. That's one of the features that's missing. So usually what I do is I put my noise reduction around 10 and I put my sharpening like around 78 or 80. The reason is on Classic, I can go further, but I can mask it. I can say only sharpen the edge which you can't do in Lightroom CC. I hope this gets corrected. Remove chromatic aberration, yes, but with Sony, you don't get that much. Unable less correction, yes. And then, uh, voila, I think I'm basically done with this. So, yes, I really love this view of Zion National Parks. If you get a chance to go, it's amazing. Now, you can download, I'm giving you all these source files for free. And the link is below the video, so you can practice with it. And you can even post the result on your social media and just tag me at at photo search. Just don't sell this to a gallery or something like this. Also, last week I did this really cool retouching with my daughter in Barcelona. Um, amazing tricks for outdoor portrait, starting right now.